This is my pastor from when I was a kid. So I want you to come on in. Pull up a chair. Well, come on in. Come on in. Pull up a chair and tell me how you been. We're fixing to sing. I'm doing the lead. So if you would sing the harmony. But if you can't sing in tune. Well, that's okay because I can't hear you. Just don't forget your decaf on sweet tea. Then sit up straight and sing along with me. Come on in, come on in. Pull up a chair and tell me how you've been. Just don't forget your unsweet tea. Then sit up straight and sing along with me. Yeah, sit up straight and sing along with me. Hey, everybody, we're not going to be doing that much singing today. I'm sorry that song kind of led you astray because I went this morning to the Arise Baptist Church here in Houston, Texas, because my pastor, Brother Harold Clayton, he's been preaching for how many years? 67. 67 years. Can y'all hear him good? He's he's about tired. But I asked him if he would come by even though even though he's headed back to Dallas, right? Dallas. Yeah. <clears throat> and you preached so good this morning. It reminded me of the days growing up at the Greenwood Village Baptist Church. When I was 11 years old, we left the Berean Baptist Church because that preacher started preaching that we were going to have to go through the Great Tribulation. And Daddy didn't want to go through the Great Tribulation, so we found a church going in the rapture. Amen. And that was yours. Yeah. And another thing that made us choose your church over the Garden Oaks Baptist Church, which was my mother, my dad's mother's church, was because y'all would shout. Greenwood would raise their hands, praise the Lord. So you started Greenwood what year? 1955. 1955, three years before I was born. <laughs> and uh, how, how you got? How'd you meet the Lord? Tell me how you met the Lord. Well, I was just a nine-year-old boy. My mom and dad I took me to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and there I accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord when I was nine years old. Wow. And so, when did you know you were called to preach? I was 21 when I knew God called me to preach. Yeah. And then you started Greenwood when you were how old? That must have been shortly 22. there. 22, right away, huh? And then tell me about Beulah Land. I've told people around the world about Beulah Land and how I met Jesus at that little church camp. And how many years did we have Beulah Land? Do you remember? Oh, we had it from 1972 to 1984. Wow. Boy, those were fun days. Yes, they were. Those were fun days. I remember one thing. I remember working in the kitchen at Beulah Land, and you had a potato peeler. You remember that big round thing, and the potatoes would shoot around the whole thing, and that was so much fun. And then they'd come out totally peeled. Yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. And I also remember we had air conditioning in the windows. In the windows. And I had a stink bomb one year that you could put right in that crack in the side of the window in the girl's dorm, and you crack that stink bomb in there, and the lights start turning on. <laughs> well, what do you remember about our, our time at Greenwood Village? What is your favorite memories of your time there? Well, my, my favorite memories, of course, include your mom and dad. Oh. And your mother was my pianist for 10 years. Right. And your dad was my lawyer. And when they went to Lynchburg, Virginia, he was also Jerry Falwell's lawyer. Right. And uh, they were wonderful friends. They brought their family. 
and y'all came and did a lot of singing. Yeah, we did. Christy and, and me and Christy Mama. Christy and you had a trio. His daughter's Christy, and she's a great singer. And uh, y'all had that trio, and y'all sang all over, all around the country. Right. And uh, then whenever they, then you went to our school. Right. And when y'all graduated, started going to college at Lynchburg, well, then that's when your folks moved up there, too. Yeah. And then this little pen right here, the turtle, I don't know if you can see that, y'all, he has got a sugar stick sermon. I mean, he is renowned. That's your most famous sermon, isn't it? I preached it about 400 times. Wow. The turtle and the hare. And you can Google it. You can go to YouTube and put in Brother Harold Clayton, Turtle and the Hare, and you can hear that sermon. Yeah. Well, I know you're tired because you preached, you preached an hour this morning. I did. You sure <laughs> did. And it was interesting. It's still good. You know, I mean, most people an hour and I'd be thinking, oh, I'm so hungry. But I didn't get hungry. I loved hearing you preach. You, you did really good on the things that we need to be excited about excited, enthusiastic, come see my vigor. Was that the word? Come see my zeal. For come the Lord. see my zeal for the Lord. Mm -hmm. That was good. Yeah. Zeal for the word of God. Zeal for the house of God. Zeal in giving. Yes. And zeal for people. Yeah. And zeal for God's servants. We sure need that. We've lost that. Yeah. How many times have you preached that one? About 400 times. That one, too? Well, that's, that, that was the turtle. In the oh, room. the turtle one, yeah. But the, today's sermon was a new the, one? Today was, uh, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Oh, isn't that good to have yeah. zeal? You know, I've got yeah. these little fellas, Israel and Chino. They live in Dominican Republic, and they, are, they met Jesus by watching me online. Oh. And, that, and they can thank you because you told me about Jesus. You know one thing I'm thankful for? Y'all got his name right. I didn't have to weed through Mohammed to find Jesus, you know, right. and all those other gods out there. I mean, you got his name right, and I love him. I've loved him since the day Mama told me his name. But I put my stake down in the ground June 5th, 1973, on a Tuesday night in Beulah Land. And I thank you. Amen. That Beulah Land was a camp for young people, and we had as many as four different, uh, 400 different churches that sent young people to Beulah Land. And uh, no telling how many of them were saved, some called to preach, and he saved Mark Lowry there, and that was a great day. And my brother. And he saved your brother. The Mike. same night. Yeah. Yeah, God was moving. Johnny Pope was preaching. Remember him? Right, I sure do. Yeah, he was only 18. I, I knew Brother Pope before he, before he got married. Oh, me too. He was just a teenager. Yeah, yeah. But he was a great preacher. <clears throat> well, y'all, I want to close today with Brother Clayton's favorite song. You sang it all the time when I was growing up. I think about you every time we sing it on here. And I'm going to put the words up. It's probably one of the most requested old hymns. You know, I go live every day when I'm home and just sing the old hymns. We don't do anything but the old hymns. And every now and then I'll throw in something else. But we just sing one old hymn after another. And this is one that you sang the second verse to all the time. Victory in Jesus. You remember that? Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed this morning, this church this morning sang the old hymns. That's what they say. That's yeah, what they it was one of the, I've not been to a church in a long time that sang the old hymns. And the reason why we're close, and I, I know you, so you said close, well, we just got started. Well, let me tell you this, the, I'm gonna spend a little time with him and Sister Clayton, and maybe I'll get back on later. But we're gonna sing this right now, Victory in Jesus, because I, can you sing the next, the last verse? That I... <laughs> I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning 
of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is through him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing. Now this is the verse I heard you sing. I heard about his healing. I heard about his healing. How he made the lame to walk on him and cause the blind to see. And then I cried. Sing, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Brother Reverend Dr. Harold Clayton, everybody. I heard him say, that's a little low for you, wasn't it? I've lowered, see, I've taken all the keys and lowered them as oh. I've aged. You know, yeah. all baritones end up being bass singers eventually. <laughs> But we, we use this hymnal, and I put the, uh, I think I did, I hope I did. I'm going to put the in the show notes how you can order your own. It's not from me. It's from the Pentecostal Publishing House. You were raised Pentecostal, weren't you? And then he converted to Baptist. But this is Singing to the Lord Pentecostal, uh, and it's got all those songs we love. Get this, because I'm going to eventually probably quit putting up the words, and I'll just call out the hymn number. And we'll sing it that way. Amen. See, you need to tune in, Brother Clayton, when you're home. Okay. Sing along with me. <laughs> I thank you for doing this, coming by and visiting with us. Live from around the world, 1,132 of you are watching on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and MarkLowry.com. And I thank you for tuning in whenever I decide to go live. You drop everything and see what we're up to. Well, this is the man. This is the man that formed a lot of my early theology and falling in love with Jesus. It's all his fault. Amen. God bless you. I'll talk to y'all. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>